Right, so uh, welcome to this tutorial which is going to be on um, how to create a web form that will insert a new record into a table in a MySQL database. Now I'm going to use PHP and uh, SQL obviously. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to start with two pages I've already created. I've got one called New Blog on which is going to be, uh, there'll be a form which you fill out and when you submit it, it will go to the other page which I've called enter new blog and uh, that's where the SQL query will run that inserts the record. Now um, both of these uh, have the same database connection string here, I'm using an includes file. Um, if you don't remember, if you don't know how to do that or you're uh, not sure, uh, have a look at my previous tutorials, I think number 10 deals with includes files. So uh, you have a look at some of those and um, then come back, otherwise continue on. Uh, so I'm just going to start with the new blog page and um, just to save time I'll go to the design view and um, we'll just add a little thing like you know, add new article. Um, and what are we going to have? We need to have, first of all it's a form, so uh, before I do anything else I need to insert a form there it is there and uh, down the bottom here the action I'm going to send that to my other page called enter new blog dot php and the method should be post All right so now I'll just click inside the form and uh, the first thing we have is the headline now I'm just going to go shift enter just to drop down one line so when I insert a text field uh, it'll be directly below it now the uh, the ID for this I'm going to call headline. Now this actually matches um, the data in the table, so I do actually have a uh, a column there called headline in my table. So I'll click OK, and there it is there. Um, I might just make that a bit wider, say 80. And uh, you'll notice actually here that headline that I typed in has now come in here as the the ID for it. Uh, hit enter and the next thing I'll have is the article and again I'll just go shift enter to add a, a line break I'll add a text field uh, and I'm going to call this one article again this matches what's in my table uh, this text field though actually I'm going to make it nice and wide I'm going to make it multi-line and give it about six lines okay. this should be nice and big um, enter again and the last thing I'll add will be the author shift enter again to add a line break new text field give it an ID and OK and I might just change the width of that as well to 80 right so uh, oh, I can't forget a submit button so at the top here there's submit that submit. Okay, so um, now I have a form with three text fields. Uh, I'm going to complete that information. When I click on submit, it is going to send us to my other page. So I'll save that and go to my second page, enter new blog. Now, um, what we need to do is the top here is clear a line or two. Um, I need to uh, grab the information as it is posted across from the previous page and uh, assign it to a, a variable and then I will run these QL queries. So the first thing I'll do is create these variables. So the first one I think was headline. Remember each variable must begin with a dollar sign. Um, it's coming from the post array, so dollar sign underscore post. Then the square brackets, um, put an apostrophe and then the ID that you assigned to the um, text field, which I called my first one headline. The next one I called article, so dollar sign article. There's my post array, and in the square brackets inside the apostrophes I have article. And the last one was author, so dollar sign author equals, there's my post array, inside square brackets apostrophe author and notice each line has been entered with a semicolon so that's just processing the uh, the data as it comes through and assigning it to a variable um, 
Right, so now what I want to do is create the query, the SQL query that will actually insert the record. So um, I'm just going to call mine, uh, put it into a variable, and then I'll run that. So I'm going to call it enter underscore SQL um, equals, and then in speech marks, I'm going to have insert into then the name of the table, which in my case was news, and then in brackets, the stuff that we're inserting is the headline, the article, the author, and also the date. Because there are four bits of information in this table. Um, the values that we're inserting are, and now I'm going to put each um, each variable with an apostrophe around it. So apostrophe, then dollar sign, headline. Notice that that matches the first bit of information from the other bracket. So the next one now is going to be article. So comma. Then an apostrophe is dollar sign article, comma, an apostrophe again, and there's author again with apostrophes around it. Now after the next comma, the date, we're actually going to use a, a function here, which is s or current date, C-U-R-D-A-T-E, and then just empty brackets like that. Now that grabs the current date, um, and then what I need to do now is close this bracket here which the values are in so I need to then just add another close bracket and then close the speech marks because it's the end of that query and then as always in my line with a semicolon so that's the query we're going to run then to run it I'll go enter underscore query and that's where we use the PHP command mysql query and in brackets the query that we're running is the one that we stuck into this variable enter underscore SQL um, and if it fails we'll just die and display the error okay so uh, that little or die stuff is a bit is optional I like to put it in but totally up to you so um what that should do now is that should run that query now just down the bottom I'll put a little confirmed thing that says uh, I don't know new article has been entered and um, I guess it's probably worth putting a link to the list of articles to make sure it's there. So um, I'll just duck out to the design view for a second. Where are we? Enter. Um, I'll just add here all articles and um, I'll just link to it. So I'll link to my page called articles. So that's just a page I've created in a previous tutorial. Again, you're welcome to go back and have a look at that. Um, if you don't want to, you can always um, just go into your database and have a look to see if a new row has been entered to the table. Um, anyway, I'm going to save save this. So I've got my new blog and my enter new blog. Um, so if I now upload those, there we go. And what we'll do is we'll just run where are we, new blog. So I'm just going to test this. Where are we? And um, it'd be interesting to see how long this takes. Um, we will run it and uh, double check that's all working. All right. So um, magically, <laughs> I uh, pause that because it took forever. Uh, magically, it's working again. So. Um, here we are on the new blog page and if I just uh, throw something in here like you know um, here we are testing again and my article is here is my fantastic article um, I'm the author if I uh, submit this all going well new article has been entered that's good that's our confirmation text if I click on my link now which takes me to that other page of all my articles there's the title, here we are testing again by my author, if I drive into it, there it is, here is my fantastic article. I know it's ugly, it's unformatted, but um, you can see now that form has successfully entered a new article. So if I just go back to Dreamweaver briefly, um, what we did, remember, was we had a form that had an action of enter new blog, it took it to another page, it posted the information, each of these text fields has a, uh, an ID, so headline, article, and author. Um, 
when the information gets to the new page, that uh, the uh, headline, article, and author was all posted. We've assigned each bit of information to its own variable, and then we've inserted that information into um, into the database table by using this SQL statement here. So there you have it.